Hey everyone, welcome to season four of the Innovators Mindset podcast. And I'm so excited to be back with you sharing some insights, some of the learning that I've had, um, not just last year, but moving forward and to bring you really wonderful guests. And one of the reasons I absolutely love doing this podcast is it's like having a conversation with a good friend and having more of these talks, digging into stuff and really trying to dive deep. And that's something I've been really focusing on. How do we not only dive deep into ourselves, but really learn about the experiences of others and take this time to use technology to really enhance our connection, to have a better understanding of other people and not just use it to, you know, have the little surface level conversations. And it's one of the reasons I really love talking to Dr. Mary Hempel. She's been on the podcast before. I thought she'd be a perfect way um, to start the 2023 season. And I was thinking about our conversation after, and I was reminded of this quote that if you don't risk anything, you risk even more from Erica Jung. And as you look into this year, one of the questions I always ask is what will I create? What will I, you know, do with the learning I have? Because a lot of times we, we learn some very valuable lessons, but we don't implement. And this is the whole premise about the innovator's mindset. It's not just about gathering knowledge. It's actually doing something with the information we take. So I hope that not only do you have a opportunity to learn from Mary Hempel, but you take something that she shares, some of the ideas that we discussed in this podcast and actually create something with it. And maybe it starts with a, an Instagram post or, a, or you know, uh, maybe a YouTube video, maybe a blog post. Maybe it's an idea that you've been sitting on and you decide, you know, you can jump into because I think we have this opportunity to consume really amazing information, but what we do with it is what really matters. And I hope that you get this from the conversation, but you think about this as you move into 2023. So welcome them back to not only another episode, but another season of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. This is season four, and this is a brand new year, January 2023, and I'm so blessed. We're going to do a short podcast with my friend, Dr. Mary Hemphill, and I've known Mary for several years. We actually connected through a mutual friend, Yasmeen Robbins, uh, and Yasmeen is actually under the process of writing a book with us, and we got some exciting news, right? We do. We got some exciting news. <laughs> Before we, before we get into that, um, Mary, could you just introduce yourself to everybody? Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do today. Absolutely. First of all, it is a pleasure to be here. Happy 2023, George and the entire community. I am so excited. My name is Dr. Mary Hemphill. I am the CEO and founder of the Limitless Lady LLC, the author of the One Minute Meeting. I'm a speaker as well as a leadership coach and consultant. Um, I'm telling you, George, this, this past couple of years, I have been just so grateful leaning into my experiences as a former teacher, administrator, and state director to help help our leaders just navigate what is the very beginning stages of this post-pandemic society and helping them innovate. And so I just couldn't be more excited to kick off the year with you. Yeah. And you do, you do some like amazing work and I love your, your kind of mantra of the idea of limitless. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you kind of start the year off because, you know, I'm, I, you know, this about me, I'm always trying to push myself to grow yes. and to get better. And, you know, some days I, I struggle with it. And I think a lot of times people have this perception that, um, when you kind of have this, it's only like ups, like there's, there's only ups through this process. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, so when, as people are looking into 2023, um, maybe, maybe on a personal, let's start with the personal yes. element of this too. Like, w how can you kind of like, how do you embrace that, that mentality of, you know, being limitless? Like, what does that look like from a, a personal aspect? Absolutely. And I, and I love sharing this, the story of how we got to limitless, because I think it's exactly what people have been going through for the past three years. And really now that COVID has put a magnifying glass on our minds. Mm -hmm. When we think about limitless mindset, when we think about limitless lifestyle or limitless leadership, what we're saying is that the old mental model, the old sound bites, the old mm -hmm. things that people, that society, that the media and that the world try to tell me about what is inside me, whether it's my gift, 
whether it's my talent, whether it's my potential, or whether it's just simply an idea that's just crazy enough to work. Mm-hmm. When you are told you're too old, when you are told you are too young, when you are told you're not in the right industry or that you don't have the right background or that you didn't go to the right school or you don't have the right degree, mm-hmm. we are literally stopping people from optimizing their limitless potential in our schools, in our classrooms, in our boardrooms, and in our living rooms every single day. So what Limitless Mindset says is that I have to really come face to face with all of the things I've been told that put a cap on me. So whether you're a multi-passionate teacher who you may be a phenomenal educator, but you have hobbies and interests that impact the world and that people are always calling on you to be able to share with groups of children or even adults, or maybe you're a principal who has a fantastic idea that could revolutionize your district or revolutionize your state. How are we creating spaces where people feel safe in being limitless? And that is why I created the Limitless Lady, because everything about that statement is almost oxymoronic, because as women, particularly as women of color, we are told that you can go this far and no further, or you can do this, but you can't do this, or you can say this, but definitely don't say that. And when we have created spaces, particularly myself, I have been the only for so many opportunities in my life. I've been either the only woman or the only young person or the only woman of color or the only educator. Sometimes when you stand in your voice, you don't realize that you release people, you give them permission to be free. And so as we go into 2023, a limitless school leader looks like creating spaces where students and teachers and even your superintendents and boards can see the potential past the standards, past curriculum and instruction, past professional development, where teachers feel safe, where students are excited about their new ideas and we embrace them and we bake those in to the things we did in yesteryear that work, but they don't meet the needs of today. I, you know, I, I always get the like, oh, you're so young, George. <laughs> I always get that all the time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something, George. Whatever. You're only as young as you feel. <laughs> well, you know, when you're when you're talking about this, I, I I I know you. I know we were talking about this before we got on the podcast and started mm-hmm. recording. You know, I know you read, uh, and I appreciate that you read my email um, yes. every week. And there's a little, there's a little. I, I wrote about it. Like, there's a little spite in me. Like, tell me I can't do something. I dare you. Right. Like it's kind of like something like there. I I do have that. I'm a I'm a I'm a child of like the Michael Jordan era. It's like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to actually like get I'm going to use that. I'm going to I'll even make stuff up to make me mad. Kind of that too. Like I like kind of being like um, I actually I'm I'm really curious about this statement. Um, I heard somebody said this and, uh, you know, you kind of mentioned COVID and, you know, Mm -hmm. the idea of being limitless and a lot of people, you know, They'll say like, oh, you know, because of COVID, you know, COVID, mm-hmm. because of COVID, we do this. And I'm like, COVID didn't do anything. Yeah. It's like, it's our reaction to like how we did stuff and how we kind of move things. And like, you know, I, I, I struggle with this too. And I, mm-hmm. and I struggle with the sense that, um, I was, I, I can say I was blessed not to like lose anyone to COVID or anything like that. And I know that, you know, those tragedies affect yes. people in different ways. And so like a lot of times people think we're just talking about a virus, but not necessarily like families impacted. But then right. I, I also think, um, I think about like probably one of the hardest things that ever happened in my life was my dad passing away. Like it was like really, really tough to actually deal with that. And I still, I feel I like deal with it too. Mm-hmm. And part of the, dealing with it is I talk a lot about my parents and I share a lot of the stories and I feel like I, I take those lessons that I learned Mm -hmm. through my father's passing, what I reflected on upon his life, but I also honor him through the sharing of stories. So I, and it's not to say it didn't affect me in a negative way at all, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I also try to feel like, how can I use this very tough situation to, move forward so like what do you kind of like when you look at that like is that something like does that make sense is that, that something totally that makes sense because the thing is is when we think about any experience that changes us or any experience in which it causes us to look at life and the way we move through life differently right. it is that point of inflection where you have a choice to make you can either choose to continue to grieve inside yourself mm-hmm. or you can say that your dad's life 
has the potential to inspire people and the number of people in places maybe that he never visited or the story has an opportunity to live past him. And so what you're doing is you're not only honoring his legacy, but you're continuing his legacy. You're putting feet to his legacy. The, the Saturday morning when I got that particular email, and I, I look for your emails every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. <laughs> but that particular Saturday morning, mm-hmm. when I read it, it was almost like you gave me a glimpse into your journal or you gave me a glimpse into your innermost thoughts, which did two things. It made you relatable, personable, and human. But it also allowed me to see, oh my gosh, George is able to show up this way because look at the tradition. Look at what his dad poured into him. Look at how he took his life. And even though that was a sad moment, even though this caused change in George that he can't undo, he still took that. And instead of it allowing it to be a limited experience that only lives up here, he created a limitless impact because I'm sitting here today, two months after you sent that Saturday email and I'm telling the story. And I promise you, I've told at least two or three other people about that when you're in the airport and the superintendent who dropped everything. If we are going to elevate human beings, what a better way to do it than the lives of those people who meant the most to us. So I'm, you are limitless. I actually, I, I forgot I wrote that email. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was like, when did I talk about that? I'm like, you oh, did. now I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's actually, it's funny because that superintendent, she just, um, that was, you know, it was almost 10 years ago now. And she just, she just reached out to me this like a week ago. She just actually, uh, she just retired um, I think she's been in the district for like 50 years and it's like that connection. Right. And so, um, yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a powerful, it, it, it's a powerful thing. Um, so, Hey, let's, we're, we actually talked a little bit before and, mm-hmm. uh, there's like a pretty exciting thing we agreed upon today. Yes, uh, so can I say, it? is that okay? You can totally say it. <laughs> yeah. So I've been bugging Mary forever to say like, you need to write a book with impress. And today is the day that we have confirmed we are <laughs> writing a book. So you get the, yeah, I've been bu- I've been bugging you about this for a while. So like I'm just so I'm so sorry. and and like here here's the thing too. And I I think um this is what I love about it. I've been bugging you and uh, like kind of bugging you, but also I don't like making like pushing people to write books that they're not ready to write because I feel sometimes that actually they turn out not nah, I'm not this is not you at all. Those turn out to be the worst books. The yeah. book has to hit you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. And so it's like, you know, like uh, it's kind of like I'm bugging you, but I'm just like, make sure when you're ready. I'm just, I'm right here. And today you're like, Excellent. hey, and you're like, I'm, I would like to write a book. I'm like, are you going to write with us? And you're like, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the right. thing is, is like two years ago, and I tell people this all the time, particularly like when I coach or speak, mm. I always say, you're, everybody is pregnant with the idea or the thing or the gift or the talent that's when they give birth to it, it's going to change the world. But mm. I appreciate one that you continue to be consistent with me, that you honored the gestation period because two years ago, it wouldn't be the same book, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Now oh. that I'm ready to talk about things yeah. and share things, I have the words, I have the experience to be able to articulate it in a way that's going to change lives. And so I just appreciate you for trusting the process. Yeah. And that, like, it just like, I think part of it is it kind of sits, and I think this is really important creation. It kind of just sits yes. and it sits there and then you start noticing things and then you start yes. telling stories It starts, you know, it starts, things start hitting you. Whereas like when I feel like when, when you go out, like kind of, like looking for it then it's, yes. it's forced and people can tell you know it's like something that are you really passionate about this is this something that you're excited about i feel like it just kind of has to to like mm-hmm. hit you and, mm-hmm. and i think part of it too is my my creative process yeah. uh i once like i have to like kind of let it like find me and then once i it, i'm just i'm going i'm yes, like i'm exactly. going because i don't want to think about this for the next like seven <laughs> years Exactly. Just, I, like I like to sleep at night and just like go stay exactly. No, so, like, exactly. so what? Like, so I know we haven't like really worked out what it's going to be about and kind of talk about that. So, like, you know, if you were to kind of envision this, what mm-hmm. what is this? What is this book like? What's like a couple of the themes or a theme or two that's yeah. coming out of this book? So it's going to speak to leadership at every level. And we are talking about from the students all the way up to superintendency and school mm-hmm. boards because. 
I have been really resonating with this idea of not only did COVID hyper visualize just some of the things that we needed to address pre COVID, but time is moving so rapidly. Technology is advancing so quickly and our society is evolving so rapidly that I want to talk in this book about 22nd century impact. If you've heard me speak before, you've heard me say that we talk about the 21st century a lot, like it's coming mm -hmm. or like it's this new thing. We're 23 years in, right? Mm -hmm. But the 22nd century is going to be formed and it's going to be established and built on the decisions that leaders mm -hmm. and the way that we educate children today together, how we collaborate, and how we connect with them. And so I want this book to sort of be not only a manifesto, but a guide to be mm -hmm. able to say, no matter whether you're taking it into the boardroom, whether you're taking it into a classroom or whether your teachers are with it in their living room, what can I draw from this as a resource? to be a leader who is on the cutting edge of 22nd century impact. Okay. So it actually, it's really just, I don't know if you ever heard me say this. I've talked about this and it's just, I love this because you've heard people say this like, Oh, we're like 22 years in the 21st century. Like how does it look? And I'm like, yeah, but we got like 78 years ago. Like, I think it's more about like where yes. we're headed, not yes. like looking back at the past and kind of focusing on that. Yes. Um, here, here's kind of like a, uh, a, a great leadership thing that I, I, I learned yeah. from uh, Kelly Wilkins, who I, I like, here, here's the thing I had, we didn't like, Hey, what's the book going to be about? Let me think about this. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, if Mary's going to write a book then I don't care what, what she writes a book about, because I just know she's awesome. And so it, the, the thing is um, the, the thing that I learned from uh, Kelly Wilkins, she, when mm -hmm. she, she hired me as a teacher, okay. and it was like a really strange job posting. It was like, we're looking for a grade five to nine teacher. Okay. It wasn't like, we're looking for a grade five science teacher. Right. Grade six math teacher. Right. So, so that, so the school was a grade five to nine school. So it was like, basically, we're just looking for a teacher to, in this school that would, okay. you know, fit within these grade levels. Right. Mm -hmm. So her mentality was, we are going to find the best person and then we'll figure out the job. Right. Mm. And so, that that to me is like kind of like I'm like oh I just did what Kelly taught me right like find really good people mm -hmm. and then you'll figure out the stuff after do you know what I mean is yes. that, that a great way like that's the way you know like a lot of times you it's like okay this person is absolutely amazing they're incredible but they they've never taught grade five science so because yes. they don't fit in the exact thing that we're trying to do right. this, we've actually maybe had someone who's not you know, who has the exact potential, but when, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, yes, well, you can, you can adjust things. And sometimes it's just like, Hey, we hired this teacher. They're, they're actually really great with math. They're an amazing teacher. Mm -hmm. they never want to teach grade five science this year. And then someone like, Oh, I've actually wanted to teach you forever. No one's ever asked. Right. And it's like, <laughs> you, like those things will kind of work out. Right. And so I think that's kind of the mentality of uh -huh. uh, like, cause like Optimus. I said, like every, everyone, everyone yes. just heard for the first time what the book is about, including me. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Like, exactly. I know you're gonna write gold, right? Right. And I wasn't. I wouldn't have even been able to articulate that two years ago. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I didn't know what the direction. So again, I love that. Hire the best. Get the best people in, and figure out the rest yeah. later. And then, like, oh. where can it, where is that gonna go wrong? Do you know what I mean? I think a lot Never. of times that's kind of where you shift. Okay. So it is. Uh, 2023, even though we're recording this, you know, we're in November, right? So we're yes. like predicting the future. So like if, if you were to give people the best advice, your best advice mm -hmm. to kind of how they look at the year ahead, what would that be? Oh my goodness. It would absolutely be to remember the fact that as you navigate, as you learn, as you grow, as you evolve, you can't mess this up. The best mistakes have become the best inventions, have become the best cures, have become some of the best mistakes we we use right now in our everyday life. So I want you to go forward in 2023, understanding, knowing, and owning the fact that you can't mess this up and that we need you. We need your ideas. We need your voice. Validation is simply only for parking. And that every room that you step into, you 400% belong there and you're needed because somebody's waiting on you to tell their story so they can be free. And you know, do you know, like, as I'm listening to you with this, I, mm -hmm. I know both of us are like this. Mm -hmm. At some points we, we believe that, but sometimes we don't feel that in ourselves for some moments. Cause you and I've had conversations. I'm like, and you're, I can tell like, you're frustrated. I'm like, you'll be fine. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. exactly. 
Exactly. I, like, because like, you know, some of the stuff that we've gone through is similar in some circumstances. Yes. I'm like, yeah, she'll be fine. And it's just like, but, but also like, I'm, I didn't even I, like, I can I remember like we had a phone call uh -huh. and you were like a little frustrated. I'm so frustrated. And I'm like, yeah, you'll be good. Like, I just, like, I, I was like, I was like, nah, yeah. like, I was, but I listened, I'm, but I'm like, you'll be good. You were. And, and it was your calmness, but also your confidence that I'm calmed fine. me down. Yeah. But I appreciate you for weathering the storm, but also going through it and being a successful survivor and also being a mentor for me to be able to be like, when you said, oh, you're going to be fine. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'm going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah <you're> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you are. And and not like it's like not and that I think this is a good reminder for me because I have those like it's not like only you had those moments. I've never had them. I totally have that too, right? Where we kind of just cuz I think that the the mentality of like limitless, right? Mm. And like kind of I open the podcast, people think that you just it's just ups. And it's like no, there's downs, but we're going to like the habits, the things that we believe in ourselves, they will help yes. us through that process, right? Absolutely. Right? I love that, so, George. And it's true. Yeah. I and I'm so I'm so grateful for you. I'm so glad we connected years ago. It's been awesome. And so I you're like, I think you're like you're you're like number one podcast guest. I think you've been on the most of anybody. Oh now, gosh, right? I'm like, like I'm honored. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honored. Yeah. But George, thank you for creating this platform and this community. Yeah. It is incredible. So yeah, I'm no, it's I, it's it's just a it's an, a great way for me to like you know catch up with friends. So I I love that too. So um, everyone, make sure you'll see uh, Dr. Mary Hempel's information down below. You can get links to her book, and I'm already uh, inviting you when the book comes out. We're gonna do the follow up too. So everyone, thanks so much for listening. Mary, have a wonderful 2022. Thank you all. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.